I'm Barbara Chase, and welcome to Senior of the Month. And I want to welcome our Senior of the Month for April 2019. Thank Rita you. Rita Singer. Thank you very welcome. much. And congratulations on being Thank nominated you. for Senior of the Month. Thank you. I'm really honored. <laughs> we want to find out, find out some things about you. I understand that you have a very interesting background. So okay. let's talk about you. Uh, let's see. First off, let's go back to where you were born and when. I was born in Boston, Massachusetts. You can still hear my accent. And uh, it was November 9th, 1930. 1930. So, so doing the that, math. Okay, yeah. so that makes you 88. 88. Yes. Okay. Good age. It's as long as I can get up out of bed, stand up, and walk, it's a great, great age. That's uh, a number I want to see. I hope you so. do. <laughs> yeah, I hope you do. So uh, when did you come to Montclair? And, and what was it that brought you here? From, did you come from Massachusetts to Montclair? No, actually, when I got married, my husband imported me from Massachusetts to New York City. So we were living in Manhattan, and we were there for a little over three years, and then we had a child. And back in the 50s, the New York City school system was not that great. So we realized we had to move out to the suburbs and uh, just for school reasons. Mm -hmm. And Montclair did have a very good school system uh, also. Always, yes, excellent. So we looked in Montclair. We heard very nice things about Montclair. Uh, and we moved here in the January of 1958. And we love it here. And uh, I'll stay forever. OK, that answers probably the last question I was going to ask you today. OK. Because it is truly, if you, you know, if you can manage, Yes. It's a forever place. Yes. Good place to raise children and Oh, excellent. Yes. So, um you retired. Yes. What what were you doing? Okay. And were you doing it in Montclair or did you come here doing the same thing that you were doing elsewhere? Talk to me about your uh, career. Uh, okay. Well, I was a stay-at-home mom uh until my youngest child was 8. And then uh, a group of us mothers in 1962 got together. We wanted our preschool kids to go to a preschool that was diversified socially, economically, racially, and there was no such animal in Montclair. So two of the mothers had come from Ann Arbor, Michigan, and they had started a cooperative preschool in Ann Arbor. And they said, we could do that right here in Montclair. So we started a cooperative preschool, and it opened in 1963, and it is the Montclair Cooperative School, which now is in the old public health building on Chestnut Street. And uh, it now goes from preschool to eighth grade. Ah. So. Now, where was it? Where was it housed when you started? At the First Congregational Church on okay. South Fullerton, mm -hmm. which is a beautiful building. We yeah, were very lucky. They were hoping that us young parents would then become members, members. of the church. Sure. Uh, and it actually didn't happen, but. They were very kind to us, uh, but every Friday we had to clean up the classroom. That was part of the co-op business uh, to save money for the school. The parents cleaned up. That meant cleaning the toilets as well, oh dear. as well as sweeping the floor, vacuuming, and re-rolling out. They had oriental rugs, which we would roll up on Mondays because we didn't want the kids to walk with them with their oh. muddy boots. 
And uh, then on Friday, we had to do a major cleanup job and re-roll, unroll the rugs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that the Sunday school children could use the church facilities. Who was the highest number of children that you had in the co-op school? When I Remember? was there, probably 65, probably. Oh. Yeah, we had, by the time, I ended up teaching at the co-op. Uh, I did not have teacher certification, but the director, Loretta Freeman, at that time, when she saw me working with the kids in the classroom, she said, you're a natural teacher. I want you to work for us. So when my youngest son was eight, I went to work for the co-op. And uh, that's what I did. I, the rest is history. Uh, there, yeah, but we started with three-year-old class and then added a four-year-old class and then pretty soon we had two three-year-old classes and two four-year-old classes and then we added on a kindergarten and then a first grade and we spread out to the Unitarian Church so we had two facilities both the First Congregational Church and the uh, Unitarian they don't call it a church anymore it's a United Unitarian Congregation uh, and, and then we growth is expansion is growth. Yes. And growth is means you're doing something yeah, really something right. Right. Yes. And the co-op is a wonderful place. So I worked there for thirteen years. Now, that's our Loretta Freeman. Yeah, our, our Loretta Freeman. Yes. A wonderful person. Oh, she's she was my mentor. She changed my life. Uh, I probably would have just been this little housewife, but she saw things in me and promoted, you know, the, the co-op sent me back to school to get my ter teacher certification. Uh -huh. So uh, I was working, taking care of three kids, a household, a husband, and, taking and then at the same time. going to school. So, but it worked. I got my uh, Bachelor of Arts in 1976. From where? from William Patterson. Patterson. Uh, it was a dual certification for elementary school and for special ed. Because I have a son that has need, needed special ed, so I have an interest mm -hmm. in special education. When did you retire? 1995, when I turned 65. And uh, my husband also retired at that time, and we did a lot of traveling uh, to make up for the years where we just worked hard, and uh, we did a lot of travel. Okay, besides traveling, in our previous discussion, I got the impression that you have done an awful lot of things out in the greater community. Yes. Um, now, can you... I don't want you to break it down too, you know, because there's so much. Yes. But briefly tell me what might have been what you would consider the favorite um, activities that you were involved in out there, and probably the, the, the ones that you're probably still involved in. Yes. All right. Well, uh, of course, I know it's I not going to be easy. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, I loved the co-op. Uh, I was a member of the League of Women Voters, I still am, and I headed up the Environmental Committee for a number of years, and I then was the liaison, they appointed me the liaison between the Montclair Environmental Commission and the League of Women Voters. So for 14 years I served as a commissioner with the Montclair Environmental Commission and I am a tree hugger, and when I was working as a teacher, I insisted on recycling paper in my classroom and any classroom that I could get involved. And they used to call me the garbage lady when I was working. And then when I retired, I went on to labeling the sewers in Montclair with uh, classrooms would come out and we would spray paint the uh, 
the storm drains. Oh, so you were so, the one that was out there doing that. Yes. <laughs> so when you look at those little medallions on the storm drain that say, no dumping drains to waterway, so I then became the sewer lady. So. The true environmentalist. Yes, yes. And I was very active good in work. saving Bonzel Park, getting, helping Jonathan Grupa clean it up. And I, my house backed up onto the Bonzel Park. So I had a stake in keeping it clean and uh, fire free. Because kids used to like, like to light fires down there. Oh, really? Yes, yes as well as smoke pot. <laughs> yeah, well, that I, I can think imagine. think that still goes on. I mean, yeah, but I can't imagine why they would want to start fires. I, well, I don't think they meant to start a blazing fire, but they would do a little they campfire. They would do a little something. Oh, yeah. And, and then and the dry out, leaves would catch, out of and then the sparks. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So environment is it's very important in my life. Uh, I also quilt, and I belong to the Speartown Quilters, and we meet once a week up at Union Congregational Church, and we now are quilting for St. Joseph's Hospital Patterson. in Patterson for the pediatrics department so that when children go home from the hospital, they have a quilt to take home with them to help lessen the trauma of being in the hospital. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, yes. Uh, it's a hard time for kids. Yes, it yeah. is. It is. So we supply the, the quilts, and uh, that's every Tuesday. So, so that you're still doing also. Uh, yes. So on Mondays and Thursdays, I'm usually at the Montclair Art Museum. I'm a docent, and uh, I usually take the young children through. It keeps me young. And uh, every once in a while, I think, oh, I'm getting too old to do this. I can no longer get down on the floor with the kids. So, but every time I do it, I, I did a tour group with some kindergartens yesterday. I can't stop doing this. It's just too much fun. So that's what I do. And even if you don't get down on the floor. Yes. But if you can get down there. Yeah. I get How on. How do you get up? I now, <laughs> yes. The, the kids would have to help <laughs> with me. <laughs> yeah, so but I have a little folding <laughs> stool that I sit on, and uh, that, that gets me down lower. Yes. Okay, so with all of the activities that you've been involved in, which is a lot, I mean, you, you just discussed a few of them here that I know you've been involved in. Um, what life lessons have you learned in all of that activity and being with people and doing for people and what, what kind of things have your experiences taught you? Well, I think life has been very good to me and I am a cancer survivor and because I'm a cancer survivor I realize that every day is precious and I want to give back. I've gotten so much out of life. I just want to give back to the community. And Montclair has been very good to me and to my family. OK, the person who does things best is the person who does the best with the, with way, the way things, things are. are. That and makes a lot of that's, sense. That's what you do. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it does. Would that be your mantra? It is my mantra. That's why I have it up on my it's refrigerator. Very it's very special. I mean, it makes sense. Once you roll it out. Yes, yes. Because it's like a, not really a tongue twister, but it's. Yeah, you've it's got a lot it. to think about. Lot to, it gives you a lot to think about. Yes, yeah. yes. And to live by that. Yes. It's precious. Yeah. We would yeah. have a wonderful world. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, again, congratulations. Thank you. It's been really great talking to you and learning a, a lot about you. Great.